The material presented is intended to augment one's enjoyment of J.K. Rowling's book, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, not act as a substitute. If you have not purchased a copy of the Half-Blood Prince, please discontinue your patronage of this production until you do. The Deadly Abridgment presents Harry Potter and the Half-Assed Parody, a satirical supplement for Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, abridged by Sketch McQuinner and the cast and crew of The Deadly Abridgment. Chapter 1. Minister of Hocus Pocus Unicorns and Stuff It was almost midnight, the witching hour, and the Prime Minister was sitting in the oblong office. An oblong is sort of a fancier way of saying an oval. Prime Minister Terry Jones paced the lengthwise axis of the Oval, worried over recent events. Oh dear. A bridge had fallen, killing dozens. Grisly murders had occurred with no apparent motivation. A general malaise had overcome the British Isles that nobody cared for, mostly because it sounded so French. He was getting blasted in the media, indirectly blamed for the catastrophes by long-time rival Jethro Q. Walrus Titty of the Silly Party. He went to look out the oblong window at the depressing mist that blanketed London when he heard a too familiar cough behind him. Harumph! Oh no. He turned, and just as he'd feared, the cough came from a painting above the fireplace of former Prime Minister Gumby, a long-faced man with a short comical moustache and a napkin tied about his head. The figure in the portrait continued. Announcing the arrival of the Right Honourable Cornelius Fudge! You don't suppose it could wait, do you? It's just that I have appointments lined up until three years after I'm out of office. Such a shame, really. My head hurts! Oh! The Prime Minister had known from long experience that debate with a painting was futile at best, and instead chose to get behind his desk to make himself look as presentable as possible. His fireplace erupted in green flames, singeing the antique rug before it. Stepping out of the fireplace like a Santa that brings good little children bad news for Christmas was a curious man in a pinstriped cloak and a sooty green bowler hat. Evening, squire, said the man, dusting himself off. The chimney-dusted gentleman across from the Prime Minister's desk was Cornelius Fudge, and his visits always meant ill news and a hefty cleaning bill for the British taxpayer. Good to see you. Good indeed, no I mean? Um, yes. Well, how may I help you? Please have a seat. The very uncomfortable chair seems most convenient. Right you are, me lad. Right you are. Not going to take but a moment of your time. Just checking in. Bit of news. Nothing to lose sleep over, know what I mean? See here, Mr. Fudge. I have quite a bit to attend to right now. You've caught me in medias race, as they say. Like this business with the Brockdale Bridge. I'm trying to hash out how... Ah, yes. The bridge. Brockdale Bridge, of course. Say no more, sir. Say no more. It was Death Eaters. It was what? You know, Death Eaters. Dabblers in the dark arts. Evil wizards mucking about, having a bit of lethal lark. Nothing to worry about. We'll soon have it said right. Sealed tight. Know what I mean? Wink, wink. Here, have a lolly, me lad. There's a good boy. I don't want a lolly. What's going on? It was at frustrating moments like these that the Prime Minister regretted the first time he'd ever met Fudge. Let's pause in our narrative and go back in time to revisit that meeting and provide exposition to those new to the series. Years ago, newly elected Prime Minister Jones was standing in his oblong office, savouring victory. He thought over all the obstacles he'd overcome, the pundits he'd paid off, the bodies he'd buried in the newly laid foundations of buildings. So many, many dead bodies. But victory was now his, and until that first act of state crossed his oblong desk, he had nothing to do but soak up the glory and power that was the office of Prime Minister. It was this elevated feeling of glee that made the loud voice from the portrait of former PM Gumby all the more unsettling as it cut through his office and split his mood like a machete through a joy melon. Announcing Minister for Magic, 
Cornelius Fudge! More unsettling was the fact that a loon in a bowler hat then popped out of his fireplace, and before he could alert his team of highly trained and well-armed beef eaters to the office, the queer fellow told him that he himself was a minister, and that he oversaw a secret society of magical people living in and amongst the good, normal, non-magical people they called Mingles, Mudkips, Fuglies. Well, it did not sound flattering. The oddball took the Prime Minister's hand and pumped it in a shake that rattled the bones up his arm to his shoulder in an attempt to be assuring. Worry not, Squire. I have everything well in hand. Quite handy, know what I mean? Nudge, nudge. I'll manage matters on the Eldritch end of things. Don't worry, your head. What are you? I'll be off in. A wink's as good as a nod to a blind bat. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. He said, stepping back into the fireplace, and laying a finger on the side of his nose and giving a nod, he disappeared in an insane swirling dervish of unsettling green flame. P.M. Jones tried to shake off the experience, attributing it to nerves or some prank by the House of Commons trying to get one over on him, and so went back to the taxing business of dealing with the needs of Mother England and dealing with that illiterate from the colonies, until... <laughs> One day three years ago, the Prime Minister was poring over documents of some sort when Fudge appeared again in his fireplace, dripping all over his carpet, moaning over some serious business with a black man, though he may have gotten that a bit turned around, some prison or day camp called Alakazam, a school called Hogwingle or some such, and a boy named Harry Porter. It all had to do with Dementors and a character Fudge wouldn't even speak the name of. I'll be off in, Fudge concluded. A wink's as good as a nod to a blind bat, eh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And so disappeared again, hopefully for good, or so it seemed until... <laughs> About a year later, when Fudge appeared out of thin air, nowhere near as attractive as when Barbara Eden would do it. Something had gone wrong at the... Manwich World Cup, was it? Some sort of bother that had involved normal people, or Mongols, as Fudge had perhaps described them. Not to worry, my son, it's all well. We may not have caught the Death Eaters and stopped them in their murderous tracks, but it will all be sorted out smaltish. Say no more. Uh, that's good, I suppose. One more thing, small matter, nothing to trouble yourself over, just a small spot of business. We're bringing in a few creatures into the country, a dragon or three, a sphinx, maybe some ravenous redcaps, a minotaur here and there, perhaps an enraged fire titan for good measure, not that much. Now see here, I must object. But before the Prime Minister could fully object, Fudge had crossed his arms and with a nod had disappeared. He was beginning to know how that fat blue muppet Mr. Johnson felt every time he went out to eat, only to have Grover as his waiter. Which brings us back to... 